And Trapta is accidentally the most objective character in all of Shira. She views things through the lens of logic. She's big on math and science, using data metrics to analyze friendships. So it would make sense that she's the most objective, not subjective. So how does the show utilize her in the complete opposite way? Everything in Trapta does is either to learn more or enjoy the process of learning or creating. She does not have a strict set of beliefs that drive her actions like Bo or Adora. Her stance on morals starts to become clear with each episode, why would she let morals hold her back from progressing society into the future, especially when the world can't even agree on what's right and wrong? And Trapta's participation in philosophical discussions about her progress and what she believes by it just means delaying said progress, the thing that makes her most happy. This is why the Horde was so appealing to her, an environment that never stopped her to question what she was doing and why. So long as Entrapta made the next iteration of War Machine, Catra was pleased. Similar story for Horde. But Bahordak appreciated Entrapta's help beyond physical means. That relationship spawned a short discussion about the beauty of Fla, which carried significant emotional depth for both characters. The Horde accepted Entrapta and rewarded her for being herself. Entrapta enjoyed meaningful friendships with Scorpion and Hordak, an experience she never received from her time in the Rebellion. For example, Bo was the only member of the Princess Alliance who attempted to befriend Entrapta and make an attempt to understand her, but that was more so an admiration for her technological skills and not Entrapta as an individual. In addition, Mermista and Perfuma actively disliked Entrapta, which comes to a head in Season 5 when they're all reunited and first to work together. Not only that, Adora actively disliked Entrapta from the moment they met. Adora didn't care to say or act upon her dislike, but the way she spoke and behaved towards Entrapta, including body language, expressed Adora's unfavorable opinions. For more evidence of this, we can see Adora talking down on Entrapta during the Princess Prom episode for being the least bit hospitable towards Catra. She stole my food and then asked me to spy on people with her. Is this what love feels like? Entrapta, she's from the Horde. The people the Rebellion are fighting? The Rebellion you're a part of? Ah! There's a lot of societal stigma about autistic people being weird or rude, which I suppose we could extrapolate and say that is demonstrated in the scene at Princess Prom. Uh, however, Catra likes this behavior. Adora is creeped out by it, but Entrapta is indifferent. There isn't a rule against using Princess Prom as a means of studying human behavior. If there was, she would be kicked out. It's just invisible social expectations that Entrapta would fall in line and work to mimic the behavior of people around her, which in the process of doing so would be abandoning herself and her interests. This is one of the biggest societal issues that negatively affects autistic people. How would you form meaningful friendships if you're always behaving and acting in a way that's unnatural to you, putting on a mask to make people see what they want out of you and not who you really are? Despite it coming at somebody's own expense, people prefer their own comfort over yours so they demand a change in behavior. Due to Entrapta embracing herself over a society that doesn't like her, she has no reason to conform to whatever the princesses believe in morality, especially when she doesn't personally know any of them or what they truly care about, and Trapta doesn't place Adora or Catra into the box of Horde or Rebellion. They're two different people. They've got their own things going on, just like in Trapta. So there's no reason for her to show any distaste towards them and pick a side just because that's what Adora wants in Trapta to do. That is what today's video is about. Societal pressures. And how that relates to the subjectivity of Entrapta, and how this relates to Entrapta as a character to be a very interesting dissection of how people interact with autistic folk. More specifically, how the Horde's lack of societal pressures benefits Entrapta while the Princess Alliance, despite being the heroes of the show, creates an environment that is antagonistic for her. There are a few examples of ableism coming up later on, but I want to spend the bulk of this video using Entrapta's portrayal in she to demonstrate issues with neurotypical society and how they poorly treat neurodivergent people. I could discuss Entrapta's ADHD and how it manifests, but so many other people have already made videos about Entrapta's behavior, plus it's also 
canon. Because other people have already talked about how Entrapta uniquely interacts with the world, I'm going to move past that and talk about how the rest of the world interacts with her. I know it sounds kind of similar, but interacts are a two-way street. That is why two people, even if they share the same experience, can have completely different takeaways. That's why I'm interested in this topic. I feel like I understand Entrapta's point of view about Etheria pretty well, so I want to look at how Etheria looks at Entrapta and analyze how the writers portrayed neurotypicals perception of a neurodivergent person into the very subjective nature of this art form of cartoon show creation. I've done a couple hours of research on the autistic experience, binging a couple YouTube channels, reading some articles, asking autistic friends about their experience. So while I'd like to think I've been pretty diligent about my research, I could be wrong about something, so take my analysis as somewhat of a surface level look into the world of neurotypical and divergent relations within Netflix's Shira. Continuing on, a lot of neurotypical people have no idea how to interact or communicate effectively with neurodivergent people. If we go by the belief that the brain just work differently and neurotypical people don't understand how anybody else's minds work, especially since we're still learning about that field, I feel the communication issues can be extreme in some cases, so it makes sense. The Horde and Rebellion illustrate these communication differences in the show. Since neurotypical people are the majority, society functions in a way that rewards their behavior and punishes people who don't, and in some cases, legally punishes people who aren't neurotypical. Entrapta was destined to be pushed out of the Princess Alliance from the moment she was introduced because Entrapta's differences were not appreciated. She was only recruited by Glimmer to build weapons for them. We don't necessarily know why Entrapta agreed. It could be that she felt obligated to say yes after Glimmer and team helped save Drill, or was simply excited by the fact that these people wanted her attention, even if it was just for her skills. I'll go more into depth about the loneliness aspect as we'll see later on in the show. Entrapta talks about how difficult it is for her to make friends, but so she makes her own. I've never had non-robots visit me before. Usually it's just me and all my friends. After Glimmer recruited her, Entrapta's people problems were creating conflicts amongst the Alliance, and that was building up towards an, a falling out for them. Fortunately, Entrapta got stuck in the fright zone before the Alliance could have the first of those falling outs. So the climax of the group's struggles with Entrapta was delayed until she was reunited with the Princess Alliance, and that was in the beginning of Season 5. Rather than any of the princesses trying to understand Entrapta and figure out the best way to team up with her, she was just yanked around like a wild animal. She was not treated with any dignity. And Trapta understood this, but nobody stood up for her or acknowledged this, drawing attention to everyone's silent hostility could potentially make the situation worse. So Entrapta likely chose to remain silent about it. Harmonious teamwork with Entrapta can be a challenge. <laughs> I don't think Entrapta feels bad about switching sides because the Princess Alliance claim that they were the ones saving the planet, but the Horde comes along and works to make this a suitable environment for Entrapta. Like I mentioned earlier in the video, Catra and Adora are their own people. Catra is self-absorbed, while Adora has a hero complex, which is basically being self-absorbed but with extra steps. I could understand the perspective of the Horde being from good guys from this perspective, because remember, Hordak was raised by Horde Prime. He has zero opportunity to see things from a different perspective until Entrapta entered the scene. For a real world comparison, alt-right religious groups think that they need to save the world from the demon-possessed gaze. In their own minds, they're the heroes and we're the villains, while from our perspective, we see them as stripping people of human rights in the name of a fake god. A bit of a hyperbolic example, maybe, but hopefully you see the parallels between the Horde and the Princess Alliance through this example. Entrapta doesn't have a horse in the race between the two groups, so she will align according to her beliefs. Her beliefs of scientific progress and pushing past the status quo just happen to line up with the Horde's ideology, even if the Horde ideology also includes fascism. But even then, every single kingdom is ruled by a monarch or somebody, so Hordak being a fascist or Queen Angela being a fascist, it's the same style of government, they're just choosing to do very different things with their power. More on that in a Kuvira video, so go check that out, that's very awesome. But anyways, back to Entrapta. I know it's not productive to be like, these people were nice to me, therefore I will help them commit genocide. But as I mentioned earlier, Entrapta isn't thinking about that stuff. She wants tech. 
and friends, potentially the very reasons she joined the Rebellion. If you don't believe that Entrapta only joined the Alliance as a means of bonding with people, remember that she lovingly refers to her robots as friends and speaks about them as if they are people. Entrapta struggles to make friends. Two princesses come into her home, ask her to spend time with them. So of course she agrees. However, Entrapta did not receive the benefits of friendship from this agreement, so she has no reason to stay with the Alliance, aside from, it is the right thing to do! Hopefully this puts into perspective how, despite the show pitching the Horde as the villains and the Princess Alliance as the good guys, none of the characters are showing Entrapta the evil that the Horde is doing, and nobody is showing Entrapta all the good that the Princess Alliance is doing. So they're one and the same. The Horde is nice to her, or at least not nicer and more open-minded than the Princess Alliance was, so it makes sense that she would bail on the princesses and capture Scorpia and Hordak, they all accept her. Not only that, the Horde has treated Entrapta with more respect and admiration than she has ever received before in her life. Plus, they also have all the tech in the world, and we know that tickles her funny bone. They should see! Horde technology gives me so much to work with! Back to the point about how the Horde creates an environment that's better for Entrapta than the Alliance, the Horde doesn't treat Entrapta like a second-class citizen. Not only that, but Hordak, Scorpia, and Catra all seem to very quickly and very easily figure out how to understand and maintain a positive relationship with Entrapta. Also, as I was studying the autistic experience, I noticed that Catra jived with a lot of what I was reading, so let me know if you want to see a video showcasing how Catra might be autistic. Catra seems to direct Entrapta's hyperactivity towards the general go she would like, as well as give giving Entrapta some sort of reward for completing said tasks. Examples being, Entrapta gets rewarded with a bigger lab in Season 1. She gets to go to a specific bed for research purposes in Season 2. And there was also the moment in Season 1 where Catra asks Entrapta about her planet and theories and listened, which thrilled Entrapta. Catra isn't a very nice person, war criminal and all. She's also just using Entrapta to her own benefit to get a leg up on Shadow Weaver to get promoted. However, Catra is still taking the effort to make Entrapta Entrapta feel valued, heard, and all things considered. Catra is way nicer to Entrapta than Catra is to literally anybody else in the entire show. Um, except for that one time where she zapped Entrapta, but that has more to do with Catra's anger towards a door, running over her critical thinking, and not so much, oh, I'm just gonna be mean to Entrapta now because I wanna be mean. But anyways, Catra was nicer to Entrapta than anybody else. In addition to that, in Season 1, Episode 10, towards the end of Catra's interrogation, Entrapta doesn't know the subtext of why Catra is manipulating her in the scene. Only the audience and maybe Scorpia are privy to what Catra is doing. That being, Catra wants Entrapta's skill set to develop better weapons for the Horde, that way Catra can claim that progress as a result of her own leadership, resulting in praise by Hordak to Quote episode 8, taking her place as the new Shadow Weaver. Entrapta doesn't know she's being manipulated for Catra's personal gain because she doesn't really know that much about Catra other than the rest of the princesses just don't like her. Entrapta takes everything Catra says at face value, making her believe that Catra genuinely cares about her. Catra is my friend, I think. Yes, the data says she is. It's not just Catra either. Scorpia is very friendly to Entrapta. And yeah, Scorpia has a really bad understanding of social cues, so maybe the two bond over that as they're unapologetically themselves, but the two can simply say however they feel whenever they feel and talk about it. Entrapta even indulges Scorpia and lets her overshare to the point where she's actually caught Scorpia repeating herself on tape, which is really hilariously cute, even if it's kind of annoying. But they're clearly not annoyed with each other and bond immediately, as evidenced by them dancing together like a it later just for fun. When we look at the beginning of the Princess Prom episode, you know, season one, episode eight, the show covers how Scorpia is also a social reject, and Trapta and Scorpia both partially because of Scorpia's appearance, but they don't partake in society's social structure, so they have the opportunity to bond as themselves because they're not putting on a mask and pretending to be people who they're not. I have a video about Hordak and the cycle of abuse where I discussed that Entrapta gave Hordak valid
validation for his imperfection, allowing him to no longer feel ashamed, empowering Hordak to be more confident, which in turn made him a better person. This is very important for Entrapta because she didn't grow up in a negative environment like Hordak. So when she started hanging out with Hordak, her normalcy rubbed off on him. And sure, it led to Entrapta making death machines for the Horde, but this experience led to Hordak being kinder and more understanding to his troops. I know this is weird to say, but if you rewatch the show, pay attention to what Hordak is threatening and how nasty he is about it across the seasons, and notice that he becomes relatively softer once he befriends Entrapta. This is why Entrapta is the most objective character. She's a unique person who brings out the best in the villains, but also highlights the ableism amongst the Princess Alliance. Her existence is so antithetical to the vanilla evil versus cliche hero storyline, and flips it on his head, showing that it's black and white value of good and bad is an outdated way to think. Despite Entrapta thinking everything through logically with all her statistics and whatnot, we can't objectively measure any of her actions because they're all either good or bad depending on what we focus on. This is why she is the most objective character. Subscribe if you want to see more she content. Peace!